I am Chris Corrali. I am Chief Technical Officer of Foresight Sports. Yeah, I'm an electrical engineer and I started a small company with a few other gentlemen early on. And initially we had a project to design a golf tracking system in the early 90s for actually one of our current major competitors. That technology is still being used today. That led to some work with many of the OEMs, Callaway, Titleist, TaylorMade, and did some of their major systems. Also have a background in machine vision, so those two blended together to generate the technology we have today. We probably, Foresight probably knows, my team, me, more about tracking a golf ball than anybody in the entire world. I mean, we've done it for Callaway, we've done it for Nike twice, we've done multiple imaging systems, so we probably know more, you know, than anybody in the entire world about tracking a golf ball and, and measuring it and what the problems are and how to do it the best way possible. So GC2 is, again, some kind of a high-end optical measurement system in reality. It's two cameras that stereoscopically measure the golf ball. And I think the big innovations here are, is one of the first devices that really you open it up and you place it down and hit it, you know, hit a ball without any kind of setup or adjustment. It helps you with positioning the ball to the proper location and then it adjusts frame rate and lighting and exposures all automatically in real time as the ball leaves as you strike it. So it was really one of the first products that was really simple to use but gave you a lot of precision. The GC2 cameras run at, they run at various rates based on what's happening in the scene and everything, but they initially start off locating the ball, finding the ball and locking onto it. They're doing 10 to 11,000 frames a second. Once the golfer strikes the ball, it's tracking it in real time, it's adjusting frame rates, positions, exposures, all in real time, and it collects all that data and then after the ball's left the scene, it, it can process all that to find speed, direction, and spin. We worked a lot of the OEMs in the early days and they everybody wanted club, pushing for club. Clubs are very challenging because the club has very different shapes and, and it's hard to measure optically club. In, in fact, the radar people are having a lot of trouble. The shapes are all different. It, it's a very difficult thing to measure. So we went ahead and, and applied special markers to the face of it. And we can measure the fiducials on the face of the club to sub-millimeter accuracy, very, very accurate, and get data that nobody's had before in the field. I feel like optical technology is more precise because you can you can calibrate it and you can verify it. You can't do that with other technologies very easily. And much of the radar technology only measures a few of the ball parameters and infers a lot of the data they're getting. So there, there's no real way to check it. We measure everything. Everything we produce, we measure. There's no guessing or inferring. It's all 100% measured like any optical metrology metrology system would. It's very, you know, it's a precise measurement. We, we looked at radar in the beginning, actually early on for measuring club, and had variations based on how you swung the club, the angle the club came in, the type of club of a couple mile an hour in each direction, you know, plus or minus a few mile an hour, based on the orientation of the club and how it was presented. It was a very challenging thing, so we moved away from that quickly. We realized that we weren't really going to get precise measurements with radar for the club head. Um, so we ended up going back to a system where you had to mark it, which was a little less desirable maybe to have to mark the face, but when you really want to get measured, precise data, that's really the only way you can do it. There are other companies entering this space. They're new, they're not experienced. They haven't learned as much as we have over the you know 20 plus years that we've been in this business. And I can see that their optical systems are not as stable and probably not calibrated as well. And, they're not going to produce the same kind of precision that we get. They don't have the same durability that our product has. So, I mean, if you really want numbers that are, are known to be precise and backed by a lot of experience and customers and teachers, then, you know, we certainly have that, that product. And I think the competitors are going to struggle to, to catch up to us in that area. I just think we produce one of the best systems out there. And again, there's nobody measuring club data at all right now. I mean, there's some people claiming to measure club data, they're not measuring it, they're inferring it from a lot of other data. So we provide the best club data, and I think that's going to be one of the keys to, in the future, to practice, training, fitting, those kinds of things, to know what the club is doing when it's delivered to the ball. I mean, it's what the ball does, it's interesting and it's very useful, and you can kind of see what's happening, but see how the club is delivered and then what the ball does. Those two things together, I think, are going to be really useful information. And I don't, nobody else, again, I, I want to keep saying this, nobody else is actually measuring. We measure everything. There's nothing inferred or assumed. It's all measured.